My name's Chris. And I'm Christy. This is the Washing Up Podcast. And G'day. That was, that was really Australian. G'day. I'm just going totally Aussie. It's all Aussie adventures here. Oh, hold on. That's trademarked. Yeah. Um, uh, throw another shrimp on the... We don't no, do that's, shrimp. No, we don't do shrimp. Oh, and trademarked. Where the bloody hell are you? Oh, that's, shit. That's trademarked and nobody overseas ever saw it. <laughs> True. It was an overseas ad campaign that nobody outside um, of Australia yeah. ever saw. Oh. Um, but it was done by um, Scott Morrison, our current Prime Minister. This week? No. For those playing along at home, <laughs> current <laughs> Prime Minister of Australia, Scott Morrison. That will time date this episode. It does. because um, It changes know. every couple of weeks. It, so, does, it, it is one um, question they have taken off the um, testing you for, like, neuro. That is actually true. It used to be one of the neurocognitive <laughs> questions was, was, who's the Prime yeah. Minister? They've stopped asking that. Yes. Um, so, anyway, this is the Washing Up Podcast. It is. This is the Great Canadian Bake Off. I don't give a shit. It's not baking show. It's bake off, people. Indeed. And this is Biscuits and Bars Week. Indeed. Now, I barred up for it. <laughs> You're one of the only people that gets that. So, so we're we're mm. talking about biscuits and bars now. What yes. I find really interesting, as our dog barks in the background, quite, he'll 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 interject. His from time barking to time. is like a smack and demout. Oh shit! I've got Newfoundland sayings. Oh, oh no! I'm sorted. I'm told you. I'm gearing up. I'm trying to make it Canadian friendly. I'm trying to take a little bit of the Australian out to all of our to put all, Canadians in to all of our Newfie friends. Um, I apologise. I'm sorry for the dog making a racket. That's also something we use in Australia. Yeah, that doesn't really it's work. Also, Newfoundland. Oh god, what else have you got? Are you going to drop them um, all as we go? No, we'll just keep going. Okay. Yeah. This could be really fun or it could be really insulting to Newfoundland. Although, to be mm. fair, I can't imagine our market's that big in Newfoundland. No. Luckily, we're not having to wear fly dope at the moment because it's <laughs> spring and we still don't have any nippers around. It's um, uh, insect repellent and mosquitoes. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> oh, God. So, anyway... Um, now that we've come to a screeching halt, um, <laughs> let's move on. Hey, and Marie's appreciating this. She's like, it's just like being at home. So let's. Because she's at home <laughs> listening to this. I appreciate it. I am, Marie. <laughs> so thank you very much, by the way, to all the bakers who've reached out and all the people from Canada who have reached out and who are, who are listening to us. Um, we're doing this in sort of real time now. Like the ether was very kind today. Um, mm. we, we got it very early on. Um, so early that normally the dog is asleep, as you can hear. Not at the moment. No. And. That's really good, but the the getting it early, not him being awake. But <laughs> but more importantly, thank you to the bakers who have reached out to us because that's really cool it's and lovely. And nobody seemed to want to, you know, we're just strengthening our ties as we live yeah, under this nobody world of craziness. It's going no, on. Nobody seemed to think that you know that we were nasty to them, which is good. <laughs> uh, we're saving that for Nisha. It was lovely. It was really lovely. So you know who you are, and hello. So let's start talking with. Wendy, because Wendy started the episode off by talking about the fact that she needed to just, and then, stay calm, stay focused, stay energetic, stay sane, stay standard, stay looking, stay... Stay amused. Stay stay a while, stay stay forever. Um, Stay with me. Bonus marks if you get all the references we just made there, especially my stay a while, stay Stay forever. Stay in alive. Uh, anyway, so this was interesting. Stay in play. Because this was a very big Wendy episode, apart from the fact mm. that obviously we lost Wendy. Um, I think the issue was she was too busy trying to concentrate what she was supposed to be staying doing. Like. Yes, and and more importantly as well, we, we, we got a lot of what we started referring to as Wendy Corp. So <laughs> Wendy, Corp, Wendy Corp was formed, as we know, her company is PEI. PEI. So it took um. a while. Um <laughs> What's, where's PEI? People at PEI will be proud. Because like, they showed her in the workplace and it's like, is the company PEI? I presume does she, so. Does she work for PEI? Are they a law firm? <laughs> um, is this accountancy? Maybe it's a private eye firm, but it's like private eye incorporated. And then we're like, PEI, what, what, uh, is it a laboratory? <laughs> um, they, Secret government agency. We're just going by three initials, PEI. <laughs> yeah. Nobody quite knows. If you know, you it's know, like the FBI, but it's like if you know what Canadian P- one. If you know what PEI stands for, they're going to have to kill you. They ride around on horses with funny hats and going, I'm going to go investigate this, <laughs> eh? 
<laughs> Pierre's energetic investigations. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's Pierre from the last series. Yes. He's a full Renaissance man, as we know. He plays mm. instruments, you know. He, he does all those things. And now he's running his own energetic investigation service. <laughs> and Wendy works for him. She's like... Q. She's like the Jane, Dame Judy Dench of PEI. I don't know if she's the Dame Judy Judy Dench of PEI, and the and the reason I say that is that mm. Q. And we'll get to this a bit later on, but Q would have known not to use a metal serving tray as a baking tray. <laughs> Maybe she got confused. She invented uh, um, a baking tray that was one for baking. She invented another one that was bulletproof, and she actually took the, the bullet one. On the plus side, though, yeah, uh, the shell. Bulletproof, can't get through it. <laughs> so, and that saves her, of course, from all of the shooting that happens in, in shell-based baking. <laughs> so, well, shells, there you go. Yes. Clearly, it's built in. So let's get into the first challenge, because we're not even in the first challenge No. Yet. Um, the first challenge was to make your favourite biscuit bar. Now, we started by looking at each other is this and slice? going, what the fuck is a biscuit bar? Like, I know what a muesli bar is. We have those. Yeah, and we know what sort of, again, the slices are. Mm, I know a Mars bar It's is. like basically what we sort of call it. It's a, it's a cake Snickers bar. bar. It looks like, like a cake bar. Yeah, it's like a cake bar, but it, because it has like a crispy bottom and a centre and a topping, yeah. it looks like a slice, like a caramel it's slice. A cross, yeah, a cross between a, a slice and a cake. Dumbass British calling a millionaire shortbread. It's not a millionaire shortbread. Oh, it's a fucking God, caramel slice. Caramel anyway, slime. so let's let's. And my mum makes the best ones, and you make nice ones too. Yo, my old trout. That's also a new Finland. Oh, oh shit! Ray, Ray is just getting it in there. Me old trout. If somebody at home in Canada could get me a better list of slang. No. Much appreciated because this is going to... Google came up with this. It's great. This is going to kill me by the end of the night. Anyway, moving on. Um, yes. So the first baker they really focused on was Meng Ling. Now, now, there was a bit of focus on Meng Ling, and it was because she did some spectacular panicking. <laughs> like panicking the likes of which I've never seen in a shed or a, or a pavilion or a tent before. We really do need to get Meng Ling, like, just grounded and centred before a bake because she's quite stressed. And and they opened with her dog Nimbus again. Now, they gave you <laughs> the name Nimbus this time. <laughs> so, obviously, the producers... Happy birthday <laughs> to you. So, the producers <laughs> worked out... It's the, obviously his birthday. <laughs> well, of course it is, seven times a year. We talked yeah. about that last episode. Um, obviously, they worked out that, that Nimbus is the draw... <laughs> So we led with Nimbus. <laughs> we, led, we led with Nimbus. Then we went to her walnut green tea bars. Mm. Yeah. So um, <laughs> technically much. Huh? Yeah. Look, I was about to say. So <laughs> what the problem was? They just said it was walnut green tea bars. Mm-hmm. And then in the judging later on, I, I'm sitting there going, "Oh yeah," and I'm not triggered at all. I'm just sitting there watching. <laughs> And Bruno and and Rochelle look at them and go, so you can really taste that matcha as it goes through it. Ah, 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 And Christy just looked at me as if to say, there's matcha. And I went, I heard. (laughs) But they didn't mention it before. It's like they know Chris is listening. This is two in a row. Enjoy. This is two... Fucking nice. Well, in thanks a row. for listening, Mangling. I was, you know, addressing um, oh, Devon last week, but it's good that you picked it up. You know, I just spoke it. No Uzu. Can you and where's the Uzu? Can you and Devon mm. please just? There are other flavors in the world. Mm. Many, many other flavors in the world. Yes. Devon has learned this. Devon, yes, made mascarpone date squares Yum. with butter and a butter and a hazelnut crust. Now what I like about this? Yes. Not a fucking match left to be seen. <laughs> no match powder. Um yeah. the date squares, I'm not you now again date's okay, but and, and mascarpone Look, is it, nice. It's a delicious way to keep yourself regular. It is. Um that's I'm sure what Devon was going for. And and by the way, of course, Devon Mm. We are forgetting is mm. from Regina. Experience Regina. Do, and by the do, way, do, if you do, if you do. did not see on our social media, we retweeted this out. But Terry from season one has put yes. together one of the greatest promotional posters <laughs> ever for Regina, featuring, of course. Vendana. Chris's favourite baker. Yeah. Vendana. Vendana. What's she baking today? <laughs> so it features Vendana. It's a beautiful shot of, of Regina. And it's all about 
Saskatoon slash Saskatchewan berries. I don't give a crap what you think they're called. I am arguing they don't exist. I am in the middle of an investigative report to prove it. (laughs) Our YouTube channel in the next week or so will have a mini documentary on this. I'm on holidays. Oh, God. I've got time. All right? I've got time, so I am putting together this report. Probably by the end of next week, our YouTube page <laughs> will feature an investigation on if these berries, whatever you want to call them, are real. I'm going to come home, and your, your bag's going to be packed. I'm like, where the fuck are you going? You go, Canada. I've got to find out. <laughs> I'm off to Saskatchewan. Go to the source. I'm off to Saskatchewan. He's going to go scrumping in, in like Saskatchewan for berries. Every form of berry is this the berry. <laughs> All right, so... um. Starting in James James's backyard. Definitely, um, James couldn't even keep his story straight. So, <laughs> well, he'll be um, offering you beer at least. That's so, the important thing. So, Wendy. Mm. Now, Wendy did her pistachio lime delights, which were no bake. Yes. Um, and when they talked about the no bake element of it, mm. and they said about the crust, and her response was, "Sometimes you just don't have time to bake a crust. I mean, you got to go out and see people and socialize." And I'm like, "So the reason that you don't uh. bake your crust is." socializing she's a busy woman wendy like you don't understand what keeps her busy at pei like she is yeah what is her role at pei she, she's oh my gosh she's like the um femme fatale like she has to dress up like in sexy outfits and go to like the <laughs> you know the when you always see the sexy woman that has to go and meet the the spy undercover yep. at like a you know the ambassador's ball or something <laughs> at some fancy place where she's got to like cause a scene and distract the homeowners or get the swipe card so he can get into the back room and do whatever. That's Wendy. I'm actually starting to think that PEI may be the people that, A, are behind the conspiracy on Saskatchewan slash Saskatoon berries. <laughs> and secondly, I think they produce gold leaf. And maybe that's why she's in there, because someone needed to smuggle the gold leaf in for the other bakers that are using it all the damn time. Oh, it's Meng Ling. She's got a gold leaf racket. So PEI's providing. Yeah, she's like... Import-export. <laughs> <laughs> Pricey export import. There you go. PEI. PEI. All right. Um, now, Sadia. Now, yeah. Sadia had a really up and down day. Um, mm. Mostly down. Thankfully, at the end, she had a bit of an up. Yeah. But before we get into anything she baked, we need to talk about Sadia's son. He's just adorable. And in particular, shove the cake in his yeah, face. In, in particular, That's his so sort cute. of very sort of like almost Jaws like reaction, <laughs> thrusting his head through his hands, and I was waiting for someone to look. We're going to need a bigger boat. Um, <laughs> it's like yesterday. I was out to lunch with my sister and my little nephew, who's turning one next week. Happy birthday, Isaac! He's not that <laughs> anyway, Catherine holds up. She'd cut up some like um, cucumber and um, carrots for him for his lunch. <laughs> And instead of like reaching his hand in, he's just face planted. Smart. <laughs> Look, the child is a smart child. What can I say? Um, Anne Marie. Now, Anne Marie um, made coffee Nanomo bars. So we'll talk about what they came out as later. Mm-hmm. But we're getting to know this. And, and there is apparently a, a wonderful care package that will be eventually on its way. If Jocelyn can stop sending me photos of her eating the things that are going in it, that'd be good. But <laughs> no, we really we genuinely appreciate that, Jocelyn. It's amazing. <laughs> but um, that was one of the things that was going in the box. Although I don't know if it'll make it into the box, it might be one of those things that unfortunately found its way to her kitchen and got eaten. Oh, but, oh gosh! Oh, she can't give us Saskatoon, oh, Saskatchewan. Berries. I don't care what they're called. I don't think they exist, so it Sasquatch doesn't matter. Berries. Oh. <laughs> Sasky berries. <laughs> Sasquatch berries, I'm sure, is what you call a Sasquatch Interesting, testicles. Interestingly enough, my main use of Sasky mm. is not to do with people from Saskatoon. It's, it's to, to do, do with, with the the fir- it's to do with the first lady of Australian hockey, Sasky Stewart, who's mm. currently over in Canada. If you happen to be listening, Hello, Sasky, and I don't, Sasky. and I don't think you are listening, but if you're listening, Sasky, how you going? So, yeah, so she did coffee and Nanaimo bars, and you know we saw those last series. Um, Linda did um, yes, the cupcakes, mm-hmm. which were beautiful. Yes. Um, Sachin. Sachin, Sachin had a week. Sachin had a week. So Sachin, six. Sachin obviously led off. Oh, he's on the crease. He obviously listened. I love that you're using the only little bits of cricket knowledge you have. Oh, it's 10 runs for Australia. 
I don't Not know. for Sachin Tendulkar, it wouldn't be. Oh. But anyway. For um, India? So Sachin. So India. Uh, don't India. get that wrong. That would be embarrassing oh, and dangerous. Um, Sachin. So Sachin's response was, uh, opens up, was almost like he'd listened to the podcast last week where we, we reminded people about what happened in Australian Bake Off, the Free From Week, <laughs> where <laughs> after the week of Free From Week, which included Dairy Free, the first challenge the week after featured everyone just going, how is butter? Butter's amazing. De- so Sachin opens butter? up with... Butter, butter, butter. How good's butter? Butter. And he did this a few times. Mm. There were a few different points during the day where he was just talking about how wonderful butter was. Because Wendy OD'd back. on butter for her base, didn't she? she yes. She over-buttered her base? Well, well, we'll get to that because Wendy decided... because because Wendy base. Wendy didn't deliberately double her butter. She accidentally doubled her butter. So then what she did was she started to pour other stuff in to cover it, <laughs> to sort of like try to balance it out <laughs> manually. It didn't It didn't quite work. No. Um, now, he made Sachin was making pina colada bars and apparently getting caught in the rain. And <laughs> more important than us singing the pina colada song, which you're all expecting right now, and we're not going to do it. No. And the reason is there's something not far more. It. There's something far more important that happened at this point in time in the show. Far more vital. Hi, my name's Dan. Is this something tasty you're making, Dan? So again, in, in the the Why? first part of. What's Dan eating? <laughs> Dan goes over to Sachin's bench and goes, mm, you know, I've never tried a pineapple curd and looked at Sachin with these, like, puppy dog eyes. <laughs> and Sachin was like, oh, yeah, of course, you can try some. <laughs> <laughs> this was not even Dan's best move of the episode. No. That is coming up a bit later so on. So we went for the finger dip and Sachin's like, well, you know what you're getting for your birthday now. Pineapple curd. I think you never pineapple curd. Pineapple. So, Timothy. Oh my gosh, you could do a dessert pizza with pineapple curd on it. That'd be yes. that'd be controversial. A Nutella pizza, right? And then at the end, you drizzle pineapple curd on it. Yes, I know. I'm just yes. Okay, I'm making that. You can make that and you can eat it. I'm not having any of it. I so, have it all. so Timothy. Now, Timothy again. With there was mm. a bit of a phoenix theme running through it again. Still convinced, and I know that he may have reached out. He may have reached out during the week and said, I do like Eurovision, but it was only afterwards that I worked that out. I call bullshit on that, Timothy. You are 100% Conchita It was the beard that you put on the cake at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Definitely. Um, and, and, and it was and when, when you, you held your hand up at the end and went, we are unstoppable. Um, so... Andre. Now, mm. Andre had a couple of things in this in this part of the challenge. The first thing is he used the Horton ingredient. He did. He used pear. Oh. Oh, Andre. Bad move, love. So pear is, as we found out in Series 1. Not good. It's the Horton ingredient because it tended to it's kill just, people. It's cursed. Um, it's very cursed. Um, also, the at this pear point. Pear is also cursed. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> um, so, so he used pear, uh, which was kind of interesting. Far more mm. interesting, however, and we, we need to do a bit of a deep dive, and if possible, I, if he happens to be listening to this, I'd like one. <laughs> Andre, why do you have a bobblehead? <laughs> when are you selling the merch? And where can we buy an Andre bobblehead? bobblehead? <laughs> because I want an Andre bobblehead, like, on the shelf. I think that would be amazing. But I want many moods of Andre. Like, it's the, Andre, the, like, as the baritone. It's Andre. <laughs> Andre the singer. Andre the making the piano. Andre the French and petty bars. Um, Andre, and he's also, of course, carrying the curse of Star Baker. Uh huh. Very difficult curse to carry. Well, he did pretty well tonight, but his frangipan bars just didn't quite. They weren't too bad, but they didn't quite yeah. hit the mark. Um, yeah. Now, Megan. So, uh, oh my god, I just love her. I and think... then she made the best statement ever. She just goes to the movie for the food. I fucking feel you, Megan. Now, I fucking feel you. There's nothing that compares to movie popcorn. And when I worked at the movies, Megan, you're gonna love this, right? <laughs> I was able to have it for free because we're in this independent cinema and I had free popcorn and free lollies. It was brilliant because we were povo students and, you know, when we had nothing in the house to eat, which was quite often, we'd just go and see whatever fucking French film was on or Slovakian or Czechoslovakian. Don't check my phone while you just, you know. No, no, keep talking. Okay. Um, and so we just, like, would go down there, grab ourselves a chock top, you know, some lollies free popcorn and just watch what the fuck ever while you had dinner because you couldn't like take it with you because it was a bit obvious then 
<laughs> oh, well done, me old trout. So <laughs> I know I've got you've I've, got the gift of gab, gab. Yeah. and um, I do. I kiss the Blarney Stone, and you scoffed all of that popcorn. I did. Look, by the way, it, outside of um, a, a couple of like me old trout and things like that, for a start, most of these aren't New, Newfoundland sayings. Most of these are like old English sayings. Yeah. And secondly, a large percentage of them are things we use in Australia. So they're not mm. that many of them. There are a couple. Don't get... Except when we say nippers, we mean like little kids that go and pretend to be surf life sa- or learn surf life saving. Yeah, they're not they're pretending more... to be the surf life well, savers. I did. That's what was my yeah, life that was, was what you did. that was what you did though. Yeah. Um, I now... like this one. I dies at dat. I find it amusing. Okay, so don't you die at dat? No, I don't die as a dad at all. Now, no. now, what I liked with with, with Megan's was this: the movie night bars, licorice and popcorn. Oh, now she made her own licorice. This, I do think Dan was correct. Going like, what color is it? And she gives him a look, and she's like, he's like black. She's like, no, red. This is the moment, right? Dan's move of all moves. <laughs> where Megan's like, she's put him in the fridge. It's like, yeah, they've had that argument about what color it is. There goes Dan, off to the fridge. <laughs> Opens the fridge, lifts the foil, goes in <laughs> to find it. Like, he's no longer picking it off the no. bench. He's interrupting the cooling <laughs> times of the bakes. He's like, fuck this. I'm getting myself some licorice bitches. Don't you know who I am? <laughs> now, now at this point, they showed a couple. Just whips out his contract. You can't showed, say no to me. They showed a couple of the bakes. Um... Uh, Anne Marie's, unfortunately, um, mm. I believe you referred to them as very shiny poo poo. Very shiny poo. Um, and they were um, pretty. Like if I could poop like that, <laughs> one, I'd be very disturbed, but two, I'd be very proud. They, they're like Instagram worthy poops. Um, I'm sure, they tasted good though. Now, not my poops, your. Yeah, thank you face. for clarifying that. So, never eaten my own poop. Th- thank you. For never clarif- intended. Thank you for clarifying that too. Um, we also had. Um, Mengling and Dan both helping Wendy at the end, which was really mm. such a such a bake off thing. Yes, um, Mengling just goes, "What can I do?" And Dan's like, "Can I lend hands too?" And they all came in to help <laughs> Wendy out. And then Wendy's like, "Oh my god, what are you doing?" Um, no, no, they did very well. Sadia's unfortunately didn't bake, so you mm. had to put them back in. They didn't quite bake again, so yeah. they weren't quite there. <laughs> they were a bit raw, um, but it was something she made for her husband. Oh, it was. Sorry, that meant it was. Oh, um, it's been a long week, and then. Poor Sadia, like it finishes, and Sadia's looking really sad. And Megan goes over to console her and sort of like puts a hand on her shoulder. Yes, and she like has a mouthful of popcorn and looks at her and goes, Rock from popcorn? <laughs> and, and it was the most wonderful thing. Yes. <laughs> Megan, you are all of us. You know, if we I love get you. that kind of, if I just have someone randomly coming around work with a mouthful of popcorn, offering me popcorn look, when we, work's going to shit. Look, we, look we love you. Like yes. seriously, we love you. You're amazing. Um, all right, I want so, popcorn at my funeral so, now. So Sachin, oh, you're not yeah popcorn at your funeral. Like I'm not dead yet, but when I die, I want popcorn at my funeral and just the ushers go out. Oh. Oh, well, from popcorn. <laughs> giving, giving the eulogy would be really difficult. Um, <laughs> all right, Sachin. So the flavour was perfect, but the, mm. and the pineapple curd was sensational. Uh, Andre, the drizzle didn't work, unfortunately, because – and <gasps> Andre commented on this. Yeah. He commented that everyone else seems to be in the fridge and mine still isn't. I'm still baking. And that showed when he tried to drizzle the chocolate over the top of it and it melted. Um, mm. However, his base was then overcooked. Go figure. Look, the mean of it, if you... If you uh, well, the mean of it's perfect. You and your aggregated bakes. <laughs> um, they said, however, it was buttery and crunchy, and the French, but the frangipani then was too wet. Frangipan, so, not frangipani. I know, but the frangipan was too wet, the base was overcooked, and the drizzle didn't work. So, so like, they were, bits that were good, but not quite. If you um, even it all out, it's a pretty good bake. <laughs> you and your aggregated bakes. This is why you're not a judge. <laughs> Look, you might have murdered a couple of people, but look, you saved a whole heap of puppies. You're free to go. Either or. <laughs> Devin, so the top two layers were great. Yes. However, his base wasn't crunchy. Oh, can't, can't do that without a crunchy base, Devin. It's payback for March last week. A bit of a week, soggy Devin. bottom there. Payback, for, payback for March last week, Devin. Um, <laughs> Are you cursing people? No, I'm not. You've got a hexing he, tablet. He cursed himself. So... <laughs> <laughs> Megan, the base was beautiful, but it was a little bit dry, but the mm. flavour worked quite well. Um, Sadia, as I said, much of the bar was raw. Um, yeah. There were different ele- elements needing different co- – all the elements needed different cooking times. You tried yeah. to cook them all together. And it was one of the few times that Rochelle – he didn't. she didn't tell her off, but she did sort of – Question. 
Like it, it was a... very strict. You should know that these should all need different cooking times. Yeah. I don't quite know what you were doing. I know what she was doing. What she was doing was Christying it. Aggregated times. Yeah. So it was all about the aggregated times, and in aggregated Some time, cooked. in aggregated time, that was perfect. Undercooked. One's really good cooked. Okay, okay. Overall, aggregated two out time of three. was perfect. Perfect. Um, all right, Wendy. So Wendy's solution to doubling the butter was to add almond and gelatin. <laughs> no. Chris is there shaking his head until he realised this looked like he was like, I'm podcasting. This isn't going to work. No, Wendy, <laughs> adding gelatin to things uh, is always a bad call because it just doesn't work properly because gelatin is so damn fickle. Yeah, um, like when I order a pizza, never do I order it with gelatin. Sometimes. Um, um, when I'm ordering Chinese, I'm like, can you just keep the, the, the gelatin out of my spring rolls, please? Now, the comment from Mengling was that the... A gelatin in my vindaloo. So the, the, comment, the comment from Mengling was that the matcha lingers, which was apparently said as, as a good thing. Um, <laughs> I would argue... This episode, the matcha lingers. I would argue that the matcha lingers all the time, but that's that's me. Do you have um, to? Do you have to? Do you have to matcha linger? <laughs> you know I'm such a fool, you zoo. <laughs> Why must you hate me so? So, Anne-Marie, um, her time management failed, unfortunately, oh. but the flavour was wonderful. But mm-hmm. as we saw, it looked like, as you put it originally when we were watching it, shiny little turds. Um, <laughs> Tim Timothy's looked amazing. Yeah. Bruno loves red bean paste. So do I. Well um, done, Timothy. And the comment was it was absolutely lovely. Mm, I so, had to go get those red bean balls that are deep fried. Oh. So then we get to um, then we get to the digestive biscuit challenge, which was the technical. As I call them, Chuck Wheaton's. So, or, well, I've referred to it as the McVitie's Challenge because yeah. McVitie's Digestive are the big UK ones, sort of <laughs> the most well-known ones, but in Australia, the Chocolate Wheaton. Yeah. My favourite of the one-sided chocolate biscuits, though, were the old Girl Guide cookies. So biscuits, I should say. We sold Girl Guide biscuits and the, like the Girl Scouts raising money for yep. Girl Scouts and cookies and stuff, but they don't make them anymore. It's horrendous. It's sacrilegious. Who do they think they are updating tradition? Soon they'll be letting boys into the girl guides and not like, you know, boys that have transitioned to being girls. Like, just, just fucking hell. So you need 18 Go digestive. Under Trump. So you needed 18 digestive biscuits. It's a hell in a hand basket. And not a prettily decorated one that Sachin makes. Same. Okay, please. So we needed 18 digestive biscuits. Yes, we did. Um,. Once again, when, when this episode needed some some light and some joy, yes. it went to Mingling, um, who said that I have an idea what they look like, but that's about it. Um, <laughs> now, now the reason why this was actually a decent challenge was a couple of things. First of all, the challenge was to temper the chocolate first, not just to dunk them in chocolate, mm. and that was something that a few of them did forget. Um, the other big challenge with this was, as we said, with the technical, the instructions have been really difficult. Uh mm. These instructions were extremely sparse. There wasn't even half a page. I'm kind of looking at them like a Sudoku, kind of, you know? <laughs> There's like four squares with just random words placed around. You have to just fill in these. <laughs> totally. Um, so, like, the instructions were things like turn out and knead gently, mm. roll to a good thickness. Yes. Also, the cutter made exactly... 18 cookies. <laughs> so that kind of helped them work out the sizes. And they rolled it out and cut them. Yeah. And they didn't have 18. The sizes were probably wrong. Mm. Um, also, you had they didn't give them the bake time. They just said cook till the browned on the edges. But as Wendy pointed out, they're brown to start with. <laughs> Browner. Yeah, so what hue of brown. And then there was a debate <laughs> about the hue of brown. Um <laughs> Maybe that's what PEI can do. Maybe PEI actually works with colour charts to try to work out which shade of brown is appropriate. <laughs> they, they work, they're, uh, they're an offshoot of Pantone. <laughs> it's Pantone especially investigations. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Done. <laughs> um, so this also had one of my favourite... Pantone expert investigations. One of my favourite looks that I think I've seen in an episode for a very long time mm. of any TV show was... Find someone who doesn't look at you the way that Sadia looked at Julia 
when Julia asked her if she'd tempered chocolate before, because Sadia gave a look that was like, <laughs> are you fucking kidding? Thank like, it was a, no. <laughs> Who the fuck tempers their chocolate when you're at home? You just bung it in the microwave till it's melty? Um, no. and, and, I mean, the thing is that, and we've said this a lot, when you go on to Bake Off, you should no matter how to temper chocolate because yeah. it's going to come up at some point. But just the look that Sadia gave Julia, it was just absolutely hilarious. You know, Sadia could bring that into one of her homeschooling things with her kids. Is like That could be quite cool. Mm. That could be really awesome. Um, Mengling. <laughs> she just panicked through the whole thing. There was not a moment where Mengling wasn't stressed or panicking, and then she got to the fridge and she's like, I, I'm going to put them in the, uh, my biscuits. I'm going to put them in the, do you put the, your, yours in, mine, yours, mine, and, and, and you can just see everyone else going. She's like the um the, the character from, uh, oh, what's it called? The movie with all the emotion. The emoji character? movie? No, not emojis. <laughs> it was like there's joy and there's sorrow. Like they had, and they were in oh, the head. Um, yeah, um, um, and, uh, yeah the, and then the kids the stopped. Movie. Anyway. Um, in, like balls there were lots of balls <laughs> and it's a really fucked up sad moment because fuck you pixar you fuck us all over and then i bawled my eyes out <sighs> so yeah mengling is pretty cool and what i love most about mengling inside out there you go in, inside inside out yes the balls movie <laughs> <laughs> don't look up the, the balls. balls movie oh my god so <laughs> Movie now, Gabby. If you're listening, you'll know what I'm talking about. That is a bit of an induction into kind of my group of friends. It's a pool ball movie. It's like got snooker balls and stuff. Um, I would say that it's probably on Pornhub by now in their back catalogue. But yeah, it's one of those things on VHS that are just shown to induct people. So into our friendship group, so you know where we're all at. So let's move on. So. When they got to hands off the cookies at the end of the challenge, yes, there was a moment. And we're going to talk about the hands up thing in a minute because they also need to put their hands in the air like they're being held up mm. for every challenge. But they showed Andre at the end stepping back really passionately, stepping back with his hands in the air looking <laughs> panicked. <laughs> like, and now, <laughs> no touching! The impo- no touching. It was very no touching. But, but what was far more important about that is I suggest you go back and rewatch. <laughs> Because I made Christy go back and rewatch because I called this and she went, what? And went back and watched it. And it's true. Watch Andre. He steps away with his hands in the air and all you can see in the background is Devin. Is Devin leaning on a fridge eating a cookie. <laughs> cool. De- Devin, if you want to, like, Just, what were you doing? Yeah. How was your day going? Were you that stress-free? I mean... Because he, he was there and he's like, oh, I'm so stressed. Like he said that at one point. And he seriously, like he said, I'm so stressed to run with. I, I'm just so chill. Yeah, he's leaning against the fridge eating a cookie while, yeah. while there's there's Andre like going, oh, my God, don't don't shoot me, I'm finished. <laughs> he's like the old Spice guy. He really is. <laughs> but, dude, you know. No. Look at your baker. Now look at me. <laughs> back to your baker. Now back to me. Sadly, he's not me. <laughs> All right, so Andre, they said that his biscuits were round and well-tempered with a good snap. The pattern was a bit uneven, though, and there was good flavour. Sardia's, they said the stamp wasn't legible, um, which is interesting given that it's like a written stamp. So, But um, as Rochelle kept saying, you have to be forceful with it. Yeah, which we'll get to in a minute. So I presume you have to put it on the ground, pop the stamp on it, and just stamp the fucking thing down. I just thought she might have a stern word. Um, oh. That's all I thought. But anyway, um, Devons were tempered but thin, and they were they were they were crunchy. Um, um, Anne Marie's were inconsistent. That was all they said. Aww. They went these are a bit inconsistent and moved on with their lives. Uh. Um, Timothy, they were underbaked and doughy. Um, so that's probably no good thing, Tim. Just saying. Kind of like me on a Monday morning. What underbaked and doughy? <laughs> <laughs> really, really. Um, then. We had after that, we had the, the half and half dipping that took place from Wendy. Um, well, she sort of like, rather than dunk the flat side in, she just sort of dunked them side on. So half. <laughs> half of both sides yeah. was dunked in chocolate. It was like a black and white cookie. It was a bit more like a black and white cookie. Sachin's was were well tempered with a good snap and good flavour. Mengling's had no shine and was soft. Um, Megan's had good shine, good crunch and good flavour. So the Aww. numbers were Wendy was ninth, Sadia was eighth, Tim was seventh, uh, Timothy was seventh, uh, Anne-Marie was sixth, Mengling was fifth, 
Andre fourth, Devon third, Sachin was second, and that was where they especially said, get aggressive with the stamp. I'd like to think that when he finished the challenge, he just ran around <laughs> stamping people. <laughs> just stop. Back of the head. Like, they actually probably had to postpone, like, <laughs> filming for three days. Everyone's foreheads <laughs> had bruise. the great Canadian baking show <laughs> bruised into the forehead. The nurse was there just rubbing arnica on people <laughs> trying to make the, the bruising disperse. Dan's like, what did I do to deserve this? And they're like, ate our food. Someone still um, has, like, the butt imprint, like an imprint <laughs> on their butt of it. They got a tattoo. They <laughs> yeah. like it so much. Um, and Megan was first. Yay, Megan! Um, and now the other thing we loved about this was Dan and Julia as they leaving doing their high fives yes that's something we haven't mentioned is julia whose hair was not like a birch broom in the fits it was on point <laughs> yeah you finland oh fuck um, i'm like a native you're not like a native anything <laughs> so so um just quickly on julia's hair i said that it looked very leia organa and i said it looked very frau schrader. Frau schrader. <laughs> so if you can buy frau schrader and leia organa um, wanting to rule the universe, but with other people's children, apparently. Exactly. And, so, you know, dating widowers and stuff. Dating widowers. So, and then gracefully accepting when they don't want to marry you. Exactly. So, Sadia oh, don't want to marry me. It's okay. Sadia said that she I should just me. call it a technical difficulty. Oh, Get it? Because oh, it was a technical. It was a technical, and she Sadia. sucked at it. Um, <laughs> all right. So, the showstopper. A biscuit box with 36 cookies. Now, whenever you have to build some form of structure to contain some form of food stuff, yes. it's always a bitch. It is always a bitch, like a tipper truck. Now, we have seen, and we've mentioned this before, Great Australian Bake Off mm-hmm. um, last series, poor Barb. And her nougatine chest. Her nougatine chest collapsed. Um, and we're talking about like a treasure chest. She didn't make boobs out of nougatine. Although, Barb, knowing Barb. Barb would do it. Probably after this, she'll be making some nougatine boots. So, so especially, you know, if people want to reach out to Barb, um, go for it. Um, just tell her nougatine boobs. N- nougatine boobs. That's it. Don't get no context. No context. Just, just nougatine boobs. Just tweet to Barb, nougatine boobs. Yeah. Um, hashtag, yeah. Uh, what was it? Um, justice for Barb. Hashtag PEI. <laughs> so, um, perfectly edible, <laughs> perfectly edible intimacies. Yes. Um, there we go. Done. <laughs> so. It's the adult top late baking show. <laughs> <laughs> so. 36 cookies in the box um, and the box has to be edible too now <laughs> we get to make we have to get to talk about being things being in boxes yeah we do <laughs> particularly um, with Wendy's I like made clam box I made a couple of comments tonight where I wasn't being remotely dirty <laughs> <laughs> and I made comments. I'm not going to repeat them, but I made comments. Oh, I like such and such as box. At which point, Christy burst into hysterics. Look, I love Megan's box, and you have to understand. In the early 2000s, I was a goth, and the cool thing back then was we all had like if you remember the little makeup boxes. So the cool thing was to have your purse as one of the boxes, and then we'd make jokes about having our hands in each other's box. So to see a goth box again, I'm just like. Oh. I'd have so had my hands in that. Yeah, I said I, I made the comment tonight that I really like Megan's box, at which point Christy giggled like a schoolgirl. So There's also a handy pickup line. She'd go up to a guy and go, I want to put your hands in my box. <laughs> so Devin, um, mm. Devin once again led and you're off. Like, no, that's my vagina. I meant my purse. Oh my god, you just took this too far. You creep. So Devin. Yes. So Devin opened up, much like previous challenges, as other people had, by saying, butter and sugar, what a great way to start the day. <laughs> you know, when I want to start my day, I open up a stick of butter. Well, you know, he's, he's popped his toast. What am I going to pop on this? Bit of butter. Oh, what else have got on this? Sugar. sugar. Um, <laughs> I'm all out of maple syrup and Saskatchewan berries. Now, I loved, I loved, so Rochelle, bacon. Talking, I loved Rochelle talking about this challenge because she goes, mm. we get to say what they are with dough. We get to see how good they are at biscuits. We get to see how good they are at rolling. (laughs) Now, I know she meant rolling out the dough, but I can't help but think that one of the bakers, I'm looking at you, Wendy, should have just found themselves on the floor of the pavilion rolling backwards and forwards. No, even better. They run outside to the gentle sloping hill. Down there. Just down. Just, just, oh, I wonder if they did that in their downtime because that would be so much fun. Oh, my God, I haven't done that in years. I think I'd hurt myself badly now as an adult. But so, you, I just loved rolling down hills. We okay. should do that again. So you say we should do that again like yeah. we as a couple have gone rolling down hills previously. We might have in a previous life. Not one I was aware of. Jesus. Did, did you say Jesus or Jesus? Either or. Either or. <laughs> so um, 
Devin talked about how complex his bake was, and in particular, mm. the 17,000 steps. So, Devin, what I would like from you, because I yeah. would like to make your classroom <laughs> box with tea-flavoured biscuits, I would like 17,000 step-by-step-by-step instructions as to how to do this. <laughs> I will not accept anything less than 17,000 of them. <laughs> that is a challenge, good sir. <laughs> Hyperbole. I don't accept it. I want literal The baking. Great Canadian Bake Off, season 923. Devon is currently up to <laughs> step 15,462. Yes, so by uh, Canadian Bake Off, epi- uh, season 6,922, we should have it. He forgot what step seven, 16,997 was, mm-hmm. and we start again. <laughs> so now we made a classroom box with tea-flavoured biscuits. Now I do have to say, I panicked a lot about this, and the reason I panicked a lot about this was the middle shelf. Devin, look, seriously, man, it looked amazing. It looked incredible. The middle shelf was buckling. You, as an educator, no, don't overstack the middle shelf. Yeah, but it was like, it's a true middle shelf then. Like, it, it like truly exemplify what it is to own an old bookshelf, where the middle of it has just... Could collapse at any moment. Bowed. Yeah. Yep. And you're like, I've just finished this one book. I'm sure I can fit it in there. And you squeeze it all together and... That's always when it Pop breaks. it in the top. It's always when it breaks. When you squeeze it in there and pop it in the top, it's when it always breaks. So Andre. <laughs> That's what she said. Andre made a piano. Um, an amazing, 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 amazing looking piano. It um, was a fucking work of art and structural engineering. Look, it looked incredible. He had all the metal like bits to it. It was even, proper construction. Even the, even the piano stool looked like it was like in, what's it called? Ratio. The correct Ratio. So, um, and the music on top of the notes. The notes look really cool. Wendy made her by the sea. Now, she did white chocolate madeleines and sugar cookies. Now, I want to <sighs> steal that serving tray from her. Okay, now the important thing is you want to steal it and use it for a serving tray. No, I want to steal it and use it as a bulletproof vest. Okay. Yeah. We know that PEI makes some really good ones. Yeah. Um, so, the pro- there are a couple of problems. Um, Wendy had a lot of problems with that, actually, and mm. we'll, we'll do it in a little bit, a little bit more depth shortly when they get to the actual judging of Wendy's. But uh, there was obviously the shell was a problem because she fails the first one and has to do mm. it again. And again, you're using a metal serving tray as a pan that is not going to work. Secondly, though, yeah, the Madelines. They came out with some of them burnt and some of them very blonde. Like what? I don't think. Like the, the oven. I'd like to get an oven check. Yeah, I'd like to get an oven check. Because yeah. how the hell do you burn some, but not all of them? And, and not everyone's consistent. having a lot of trouble tonight and with they getting consistent. their bakes yeah. cooked through. Oh, look, we'll blame the ovens and not the bakers. Yeah. That's, that's better. <laughs> it's the instrument, yeah. not the, the. Like it used to be me when I was learning organ as a child, and I'd just be like fucking hammering into it. Like, mum was always like, Christy, what are you doing? And I didn't know swear words back then, so I'm just call- sure I was calling it a bum bum and an idiot head. Of course you were. Yeah. So not even those because I would have got my mouth washed out with soap. So Sadia. Yes. Now now Sadia is trying to get on the Lucindia Bakes World Tour because <laughs> she had a conversation with the cookies beforehand. Oh, she's maybe the uh, the smooth voiceover for yeah, the Listen to Your Bakes. Definitely. Um, she also used henna design on the outside because she's a henna so artist. Beautiful. Looked really good. Um, Timothy decided to make the board game go. That looked amazing, it and he also so good. had the um the the uh, candy uh, glass yes, in it as well. Yes, and made the choc macarons. But oh. it was simple, but it was very effective. Mm-hmm. Um, Mengling stopped panicking oh. long enough to make an amazing black sesame treasure box. And got to use her favourite gold. On the soya bean cookies. Oh, she was just so happy with that last now, week. Now, got at, to do it again. Now, at this point, Rochelle mm. tasted the soya bean powder. <laughs> Interesting. I'm sure I've seen that serve like like you could buy that in five kilo tubs from the local, you know. Yeah, probably. Muscle and grow. Probably. Rides, rides, rides aren't us. But the problem is, like again, like when Rochelle's calling the flavour of the powder interesting, that's fascinating. <laughs> Sachin, now Sachin, oh my god. Mr. Tandulka, we know who is making the, the biscuits for the afternoon okay, tea. So the piping oh. on that basket. Oh. The fact that he did a piped basket oh. was incredible. Oh, my God. And the royal icing that he did oh. was sublime. No, there was no drips. It was all perfect. It was, and they were all the absolute perfect was copies. gorgeous. They were really vibrant. Oh. Um, Anne-Marie. Now, Anne-Marie made ginger snaps with the jelly bean roe. 
the Jelly Bean Row failed miserably, unfortunately, because mm. she didn't set it long enough. And no. so, as a result, it collapsed. But those ginger snaps, they yes. look really good. Now, Jelly Bean Row, like, do you, like, harvest that from rabbits at Easter time? Or... <laughs> <laughs> R O W. <laughs> okay, like we're not to be confused with P E I. <laughs> okay, dyslexic. It's B I E for pie, <laughs> and I don't know what that's got to do with jelly beans. Um, so. Megan made the gingerbread galaxy box with the sugar cookies. Oh. Six different shades of royal it icing. Was fucking amazing. She also used purple, so I'm fine with that. Yep. Um, and the moons. Like, I love it. As a pagan, I'm just like, I love moon cookies. Unfortunately, the cookies were slightly under, oh. but the box looked incredible. The cookies looked amazing. Mm-hmm. That purple was just delightful. The, and the bright bursts of colour yes. for the galaxy swirl. Your box looked pretty, Megan. <laughs> Now, what we did learn, though, was the definition of madness in this episode. Yes. And the definition of madness is Wendy. And Poor Wendy. Well, the reason is, and it's not against Wendy, but the definition of madness, of course, is doing something the same way again and expecting a different outcome. Result. And that's what she did with the shell. Mm-hmm. And look, we don't actually have any proof if the shell worked or didn't work because she didn't take it out of the shell the second time. She just left it in there. Yeah. Um, I, and it looked like to me like it didn't quite but I love that serving work. platter. Yeah, I no, just you want that. Fucking um, adore it. So we need to talk about the hands up thing. Mm. Um, when they finish the bakes, everyone is now putting their hands up like they're being robbed. No touch. It's <laughs> like it's, it's like it's a stagecoach. It's Dan, it's Dan sticking them up. Okay, everyone, hand over your bakes and no one gets hurt. Food. Food. What we're not seeing is now. Yeah, he's holding. Well, it wouldn't be a gun because <laughs> it's Canada. Um, He's holding up a very stern sign. Yes. <laughs> Bakes to me, please. please. Okay, okay. Two exclamation marks. Yeah. Okay, okay. Just don't add a third exclamation mark. Now. <laughs> don't, get, don't want anyone getting crazy up in here. I know she went home tonight, mm. and we'll talk about her going home in a second, but Wendy has also given us one of the greatest lines in the history of Bake Off. <laughs> Where she finished, she turned around and said, well... I didn't throw up, and that was really the goal. <laughs> I think I felt like that during exams at the end of high school. You know, I, I feel you, Wendy. It's so, good Meng, goal to have. So, Meng, Meng, but only second to Meng Lee's goal for next week. Oh, we'll get to that at the end. <laughs> so, Meng Ling's looked amazing. That box looked incredible. The cookies were stunning. The flavour was good. They said the only complaint about the box was it needed more of it. Um... <laughs> Megan's design was amazing, and the cookies looked amazing, but the texture was slightly under. Mm -hmm. Timothy's was simple but stunning with amazing flavour. Andre, I just wrote fucking amazing. Um, The piano, however, because he used that much dark cocoa powder, was really bitter, and that was the only problem with it. it was a bit overcooked. Everything else was fine, and they said you can't tell with that bitterness. You said you can't tell if it's under or over because of how dark it was, Mm. which is a big problem. Um, Anne-Marie's collapsed they said that the, the the box needed more to set however the cookies were incredible um devon's looked good but underbaked which was kind of the story of his night everything mm. looked good but was slightly Ooh. under sadia's looked good and the flavor was okay which probably saved her um wendy the shell failed again and the madelines were dry yep sachin the basket was amazing his time management was impressive and that icing was sublime and so was the flavor Sachin, not surprisingly, wins Star Baker. And Wendy, not surprisingly, goes home. Sadia, incredibly lucky tonight. Yeah, she hung on by a... Wendy was the right call, but it was a very tight thing. Uh, We we both thought that Megan was a bit hard done by. Um, Like, I know that the texture was a little under on the cookies, but she was having a really good... Work. Yeah, but as we know, the technical is like doesn't matter. The points and whose line it yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah, anything made up of the points don't matter. <laughs> whose um, line is it anyway? <laughs> so next week. Yes. Next week's bread. Next week is bread, and I think uh, Mengling, if she doesn't win a Bake Off, has a very good um, career ahead of her as a motivational speaker because her aim next week is not to come last. I want to come second, second last. <laughs> Aim high, kids. I'm just imagining her, an auditorium full of people. She's got the, the headphones set on, you know, you know, running down like Tony Robbins. She's got the fake tan, black crew, uh, turtleneck shirt. And she, what she says is, rather than, like, re- aim for the moon, because even if you miss, you're among the stars, 
aim for the stars because if you miss, you're at a slightly lower star. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't aim for the moon. It's too high. It's too high. You just don't want to be on the ground, okay? So Hit. maybe first floor. Yeah. What? I want everyone to move to the mezzanine now. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So we also have to say, because I know we're going to get tweets about it, Please tell us what you think PEI should mean. We do know it means princess. <laughs> it did take me a while. It clicked at the end. But at the end, I'm going, what is PEI? PEI. Prince Edward I. Oh, okay. It clicked, at, it. It clicked at the end because we looked at each other. PEI, PEI, what the hell's PEI? Oh, Prince Edward Island. Okay. Yeah, it's like when it's go, we go, we're from NSW, like New South Neswa. Wales. Neswa. So, so feel free to let us know what you think PEI stands for. Again, you can find us at The Washing Up on Twitter, at The Washing Up on Facebook, at Washing Up Pod on Instagram. Um, yes. And check out our, our back catalogue. Um, mm-hmm. We had, as we mentioned, apart from last week's episode one of this series, Terry was on on the weekend Yay. and she was amazing and wonderful and yep. awesome and everything you'd expect. And, and she's offering 15% off for any <laughs> listeners <laughs> for entry into Australia, Australia Zoo. Zoo. <laughs> Just mentioned Great Canadian Baking Show and, and they'll know exactly what you mean, mean? At, the, at the gate. <laughs> There'll be no um, confused looks. You will not be escorted from the premises. We will probably we, – we will be back next week, obviously. We will maybe – have a guest, possibly not this week, but we may have one next week. So keep your ears open for that as well and keep on the lookout. Um, until next week. Yes. I'm still Chris. And I'm still Christy. This has been The Washing Up, and we will catch you all later. A fine lop on.